In the distance I could hear Charlie screaming, telling my comrades and I, to drop our weapons, and simply leave. According to our interpreter, to remain, to essentially disobey the man on the megaphone, would mean certain death. Clearly, we all knew, that we had absolutely no place to leave to, other than to our command post, via a chopper, and that, was not going to happen. Oddly, for his brave young American Marine Corps man, dying was not an option. We were there, for one reason, and one reason only, to kill, and not be killed. Our company, had standing orders, to instantly and without hesitation, seek and destroy everything, and anyone, that could be perceived as the enemy. We were in the middle, of a large kill zone, and the likelihood of getting out, of this particular bind was decreasing, ever so slowly, with each passing hour. It was early September, in 1969, that is all I knew, that was no, the month, and year, that was it. I remember, thinking about how nice it would be to sleep, or to drink water out of a glass, and even how good it would feel, to believe in what I was doing there, what America, was doing out there. I could see, the wits in the distance. The enemy, was sneaking around the perimeter, they were stalking us, measuring us, sizing us up, for a kill. Command, had informed the lieutenant earlier that morning, that the entire countryside, was surrounded by elements of the North Vietnamese army, and that of guerrilla forces. The tiny, slant-eyed devils were at the wire, bunched up 500 meters thick, I could smell them. The bastards, had us surrounded, full circle, pessing, and chipping, at perimeter's end. The sweet acrid stench was bad, it was intolerable, it smelled of burnt sweet potatoes. Gunny, had assembled the troops, the previous night. He did so, on the southmost side of our position. He had instructed us to verge upon his command, at that area, as a means to wedge out an exit. Problem was, that we would not have no hard cover, whatsoever, and that, we would have to take the fight to the enemy, head on. Our platoon, was to do so, only upon Gunny's command, we were overrun. He said, that a human wave attack, of over a thousand communists, had occurred the day before, in play Q, and that this, could happen here, as soon as tomorrow. The attack, had killed and maimed, all friendly forces, within its wake. Hundreds of army and marine soldiers, had been eliminated, and were now chomping on bricks, in hell. Our chaplain, Charles Lightfoot, gave us last rites, and blessed our damned souls. Well, if you knew Frank, when I knew Frank, and I knew it was him, he'd hit you on the shoulder, then turn around and hit you on the chin. That's right. He'd shoot you twice, and shoot you once, and then he'd kill you once again. He's the kind of guy who lived in Vietnam just for the sin. You see, he killed 20 guys, and he ran like a scared rat. Ever since that day, he just cannot handle it.